Welcome to this brief guide on how to use appointment schedules in Google Calendar. A lot of us have looked at third-party tools such as Calendly to create our own personal booking pages to make it easier for people to book in times with us. Little do you know, this can be done natively from inside the Google Calendar itself. And today I'm gonna to show you how. If you're not on the Google Calendar page, you can simply sign into your Gmail and use the waffle menu in the top right-hand corner and then select the option for calendar. This will open up your Google Calendar in a new tab. And so I'd like someone to be able to easily book in a time slot with me without needing to worry about whether or not I've already booked in something inside this time gap in my calendar itself. Now to do that, we need to create an appointment schedule and we can do that by selecting the create button found in the top right hand corner of our calendar page. When we select the appointment schedule button, it's going to create a default appointment schedule for us. And you'll see here on my screen, it's set to a default of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, but we can change that if we wish. The first thing we'll need to do is to give our appointment schedule a name, and I'm gonna call my one Coffee with Paul because we all know I love coffee. I'm gonna change my appointment duration from one hour to 45 minutes. And as you can see on my calendar preview here, all of the available appointment schedules have automatically updated in real time to 45 minutes. I then get to choose whether or not the calendar repeats every week, as well as which days I will be available. I can even choose both the start and ending times for my available appointments. I'm gonna to choose to end this one at 3 p.m. and I can use the copy button to easily copy that to every day that I am available. If I want to remove any individual days from the appointment schedule, I can use the unavailable all day button to remove that day from the calendar. And as you can see, it updates in the preview in real time. Let's just add that Friday back in and we'll copy that same time slot across. Then I can head down to my scheduling window. The scheduling window is awesome because it allows you to choose exactly when the appointment schedules are going to be available, as well as potentially how far in advance an appointment is allowed to be booked. So in my case, I don't want people to be able to book two months in advance. So I'm actually gonna limit it to only 20 days in advance. And I can set it that there needs to be a minimum number of hours before an appointment is available to be booked in so that I don't get any unexpected appointments just suddenly popping up in my calendar on the same day. I can then also adjust individual days availability. So say for instance, I'm not gonna be available on the 30th of October, I can actually select that date and then remove that availability from my calendar. And as you can see, the 30th has been removed, but the Mondays are still available on all of the other individual weeks in my calendar. This is great if you ever need to change the availability for one particular day for any particular reason. We then move on to our booked appointment settings. And it's here that we can set a buffer time between each of our individual appointments. So I'm gonna set this up so that I have a 15 minute gap between any of these appointments just to reset and recharge. And as you can see, that gap is now being shown in real time in my preview as well. And the next option is our maximum number of bookings per day. So I've got this set at the moment to four bookings as a maximum on my calendar. So even though I have six available time slots on any one of these particular days, the moment that four of them have been booked up, the other two will no longer be available to book. And then below there, we can select which calendars will be checked against to make sure that we're not double booking ourselves. We then can choose a particular color so that these appointments are easy to see inside our calendar. I then hit next, and now I get to select the final few options. The first of which is our booking page photo and name. This name and photo are going to be pulled from your Google account. So if you wanna make any changes to these, simply update them in your Google account. Then we need to choose our location and whether or not we're gonna use Google Meets video conferencing or have an in-person meeting, maybe even a phone call, or we can set it to none, which we can then update ourselves in our calendar later on. I'm gonna set this as a Google Meet video conference just for this demonstration. So it's gonna be a virtual coffee. So I'm gonna now put in the description, have a virtual coffee with Paul. Then we move down to the last two options. The first of which there is our booking form. And you can see that by default, first name, surname, and email address are all required. But we do have an option there to add an additional item. So if we wanted, we could make it so that people can put in their phone number, or we can even hit the drop down there and create our own custom item should we wish. Great for consultant appointments and things like that. You then even have a checkbox to mark whether or not this item is a required item. And now that we've got all of those done, the last one we need to look at is our booking confirmations and reminders. 
By default, both you and the person who made the appointment will get a confirmation email with the calendar invite. And if you have a Google Workspace account or on your Gmail account with a Google One Premium plan, you can have additional reminders sent out at custom times, such as maybe a week before or a day before, just to remind the person of their upcoming appointment. And now that our appointment schedule is set, we have an easy option here to be able to share, just like we would with any other item in Google Docs or Google Drive, where we can simply copy the link and paste that into an email, our email signature potentially, or even any other messaging client. Now, in order to see what that looks like, I'm gonna select the open booking page, which will show us what someone would see when they click on our booking page. Up in the top left-hand corner, you'll see both my name and my photo, as well as the name of the appointment schedule, the length of the appointments and that description that I entered in. And we can also see that it's a Google Meet video conference and the information will be added once the booking has been completed. My guest can then simply select the day that works best for them and they can see all of the available times, simply choose one of the times and they can enter in their contact information. And as you can see, it's the first name, surname and email address. They select that book button and now their booking has been confirmed. They'll get an email with the calendar invite as well. And if they need to cancel it, there's a quick button that they can select there should they have made a mistake. Now we jump back over to my calendar and we're gonna see what that appointment looks like. So by jumping back to that date, you can see that I now have Coffee with Paul and the name of the person who's booked the appointment will be found in those parentheses. But what happens if my calendar starts to get filled in with some other appointments? So say for instance here, I'm gonna slot in a fake appointment here. I'm just gonna be busy between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And now this is inside my calendar. So how does it affect the appointment schedule? Well, let's jump over here. We're gonna refresh this page. And what you'll see is that on Friday the 27th, all of the appointment time slots after 10 a.m. are no longer available because that time has already been filled in in my calendar. So it's taking this into account in real time. And now how do we get rid of our appointment schedule should we no longer need it? Well, we can simply select the icon here, which will give us that fly out that we had before, but we have options here to select the pen icon if we just wanna make some edits, or we can use the trash can item to delete our appointment schedule. The thing to note here is that any previously booked appointments will not be removed from your calendar. This is just removing the appointment availability. And you can choose whether or not to delete just this week, or whether or not to delete all future weeks, or whether or not to delete all of the appointment schedule in its entirety. I'm gonna do that one there and click on OK. And the reason for this is that if someone still has this link in their history or in their favorites, if they were to click on that link, they're gonna get a note that lets them know that this appointment calendar is no longer available. And just to reiterate, this feature is available to those with consumer Gmail accounts, as well as those with Google Workspace. I hope you found this tip extremely useful and I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to check out the channel. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.